proof and usage of odd even functions so in integration like odd even uh, like functions if we notice such, such functions it can be really helpful if the domain is symmetric for example uh, let me say if there uh, is uh, integral from minus 3 to 3 and there is some odd function inside it yeah then this will directly be zero and it helps us a lot during if the odd function is not really integrable sometimes there can be some functions which are odd but not really integrable in that case if you know such properties it will be really helpful now let me tell you like how do we identify such odd and even functions basically odd functions are those functions for which f of minus x will be minus f of x yeah so let me show you an example let's say if we have x f of x equals to x cube in that case f of minus x will be minus x whole cube now minus 1 cube is just minus 1 and x cube is just x cube so this is minus x cube now x cube is just f of x so this is minus f of x so since this is f of minus x equals to minus f of x or uh, f of x equals to x cube is called or function and the name or is because generally if there is an or power uh, to the x then the function will be or yeah all the functions of this type f to the power 2 and minus 1 those will be or functions because minus 1 will be retained and we will this will satisfy the property and not just uh, these functions with power or numbers also the for some functions like sine x let's say these are also or functions yeah f of minus x will be sine of minus x yeah and then this will be minus sine x so this is minus f of x and uh, like if you want to go with this idea as well there's an infinite uh, polynomial series for sine x and all of the terms have odd power so that's why uh, from uh, this interpretation as well we can see why sine x is odd function yeah now similarly if you, even functions even function is where f of minus x will be f of x itself now let me show an example let's say if we have f of x equals to x square in this case f of minus x will be minus x square now square of minus 1 is 1 and of x is x square so that's why it is x square which is just f of x so over here we can see that f of minus x is just f of x and uh, generally if the power is even function not not generally for every cases where there are, are even powers f of x equals to x to the power 2 yeah? in this case the function is uh, even that's why it is named as even function yeah in this case the function satisfies this property so that's why it is named as even function and not just this polynomials f of x equals to cos x is also a even function yeah and uh, you can just check this and cos of minus x is just cos x yeah so which is f of x so this satisfies the property yeah? and you can also check it from the infinite series expansion for cos x all of the terms have even degrees so Basically, from the both uh, ideas, you can uh, show so how some functions are odd or even. Now, if we have the idea about odd or even function, now let's go to some interesting integration techniques that involve odd and even functions. Yeah. Now, let me uh, delete this. Yeah. Let me, let me delete this. Just for some time, I will it will just take some time. A bit more than that. Okay, now fine. Okay, now we finally have the idea about what odd and even functions are. Yeah, odd functions are those. Let me just now write the summary over here. We do have a sticky note tool. Yeah. Now um, I will write it. If uh, function is odd if f of minus x is equals to minus f of x and function is even 
if f of minus x is equals to f of x so this is now the definition now after this let's go to the proof of uh, these two properties or let's say rules and we will first see algebraic proof then we will see geometric proof and then we will uh, meet some interesting uses of these properties okay now let us first prove the first one let's say f of x is odd function and we are integrating from minus a to a for f of x dx yeah now this can be broken into two integrals integral from a to 0 and integral from 0 to a yeah now after this we will use the reflection property of integrals so if uh, if we uh, what the reflection property says is if we are going from a to b in this direction this integral will just be negative of the integral from b to a yeah because the area under the curve because this is, is because the area under the curve if the area we are if we are measuring area from left to right we call this area to be positive and from right to left then that's negative and this notation is because when calculating we get those results uh, if we are going from this side we will get positive answer and from this side we get negative answer so from the results itself we made uh, this rule this rule is known as re reflection property yeah now using th that property we will have minus integral from 0 to minus a f of x plus integral from 0 to a f of x dx now after this uh, let us uh, this let us make no change to the the second integral but for first one uh, this is dx for first one let us substitute x as minus y yeah if you substitute x as minus y our dx will be minus dy so our integral will be integral from 0 to a f of minus y times this is minus dy plus integral from 0 to a of f of x dx next now since this is our function f of minus y will be minus f of y and then minus dy yeah plus integral from 0 to a of f of x dx yeah. minus cancels out yeah so we have minus integral from 0 to a f of y dy plus integral from 0 to a f of x dx yeah. a f of x dx yeah. now for this integral we can let y equals to z or here we can let x equals to z and take both of them to z and that gives us integral from 0 to a f of z dz plus integral from 0 to a f of z dz so both of them are same so that's why they cancel out and we get the answer to be 0 yeah so this is the proof algebraic proof for why uh, for odd function the result is 0 rather than the algebraic proof geometric proof is a lot beautiful and I will show you that after some time but now let us prove uh, the property for even function as well yeah for even function let's say now g of x is even yeah we'll use the same approach we go from minus a to a and g of x dx an integral from minus a to zero g of x dx and then uh, we will have plus integral from zero to a g of x dx now uh, we use the reflection property integral from zero to minus a of g of x dx plus integral from zero to a of g of x dx now we substitute x as minus y same thing and we get minus integral from 0 to a yeah? now since x is minus y this uh, will be this will be changed just like what we did earlier yeah when x when y was minus x so both of them should be negative negative 
baptized in so we should make them negative so that's why and now uh, this will be g of minus y and then minus dy yeah plus integral from 0 to a of g of x dx now the this minus sign and this will cancel and g of minus y will just be g of y yeah dy is integral from 0 to a of g of x dx now uh, since these are dummy variables you can just change and let's say y equals to g and also x equals to g if you, you can just change the dummy variables yeah basically it doesn't matter like let's say even if we have 0 to 2 x square dx or 0 to 2 y square dx the answer and i square dy the answer will be same yeah and these are just dummy variables it doesn't matter like if you change that or not so let's change them and make it the same 0 to a g of g dz so it's integral from 0 to a g of g dz and now we can add these two two times integral from 0 to a g of g dz so we have proved uh, the property for even functions as well that property is uh, for even function this is just twice the integral from 0 to a this one and for odd this is 0 so now we now have the algebraic proof yeah and uh, all of these things are proved now let's try to see the geometric proof geometric proof is a lot beautiful than uh, this thing yeah okay now let's move on to the geometric proof okay now let us try to look at how the uh, graph of some function which is f of minus x equals to minus f of x and the graph of function f of x minus x equals to f of x so let us uh, try to see like how the graph of even and odd functions look like now basically let's say the function f of x in positive x axis let's say it goes something like this yeah now uh, for some value a yeah the function gives a value f of a yeah and then and then if it's odd function for minus a for minus a it should give minus f of a so same value but in negative direction minus f of a so the function will give minus f of a similarly for uh, this point let's say this is a1 it gives f of a1 similarly for minus a1 it would go it would give minus f of a1 yeah minus f of a1 so so we can say that same kind of graph will be like uh, replicated here as well same graph will be copied here as well but but by flipping the screen we have to like first rotate this uh, uh, graph by 180 degrees and then draw the same graph so the same graph will be traced in this direction as well so that will be the graph of all function yeah in all function we say we can say that this has the symmetry about origin yeah symmetry about origin that means about origin like how it goes in this side similar graph will be traced like traced here as well and if you rotate this by 100 degree like same graph will be obtained so it should say to have symmetry about origin now if we are go, uh, taking integral from minus a to a we are basically taking all of this area yeah now since the graph are same let's say if it has if it has two square units area this will also have two square roots area but since it is below the x-axis uh, by integration you will get minus two square units area yeah while integrating the areas below the axis will uh, come in answer as negative values and those above the axis will come will get answer will have answer as positive values so uh, this will be like minus like something minus x area let's say and this will be plus x area and so this to add up and total area will just be zero yeah so if we are integrating from minus a to a uh, for f of x dx 
here we will have we will have minus something here we will have plus something so the minus something and plus something will make our total area as zero so that's why that's why for odd function integral from minus a to a is zero and this symmetric representation makes it clear now let's go for even function for even function let's say our graph is again similar something like this mm, let's say it's something like this let's say this is a function yeah now for a value over here we have f of a yeah similarly for minus a over here for minus a also f of minus a is just f of a so even for minus a our function will just be f of a itself same value yeah because our f of minus a will also be just f of a so the same y value f of a will be there for corresponding to minus a Similarly, if this is b, we have f of b over here. So for minus b also, f of minus b will just be f of b because this is even function. So we will have same y value. So basically, we will just have a reflection about y axis. Yeah, this graph will just have a reflection about y axis. Yeah, basically the previous one was symmetric about origin, and this is this has reflection about y axis yeah and this is the graph f of x now if you are integrating from minus a to a basically you can see that these two areas are just equal these two areas will be just equal because the graph is symmetric yeah and uh, these are the same distances yeah so the area will be equal so that's why you can say that if you have to find area from minus a to a for an even function g of x dx you can just find the area from 0 to a for g of x dx and twice that so these are the properties of odd and even function yeah and i gave him both geometric and all the right proofs now let us see like how they are helpful or how they can be useful yeah just knowing the property is not enough we also have to know like are they really helpful for us or they are just something to just learn they are helpful as well let us see how okay now let me show you how this is helpful so let's say let's say we want to integrate sine x to the power 999 dx and this is going from minus infinity to plus infinity so in this case this function is really difficult to evaluate again and not just not just that if even if we integrate like we cannot really find the trigon values for trigonometric ratios at infinity that will be another another difficult task so basically in this case we can just use the property of all functions so let's say if f of x equals to sin x to the power 99 in this case if you just find out f of minus x this will be sine of minus x to the power 99 that will be minus sine x to the power 99 and minus 1 to the power 99 is minus 1 sin x to the power 99 so this is just minus f of x so you can see that this is our function so since this is a symmetric domain from minus a to a yeah if infinity is a minus a to a that's why you can directly say it zero yeah so in such cases when it's just not integrable in that case our function can really help us yeah. And there are also other such uses. I I I've only showed one of you. And let me show you how even function is helpful. Yeah. Let's say uh, we have this integral. Integral from minus infinity to infinity. Sin x by x dx. Yeah. In this case, uh, basically the function sin x by x will be an even function. You can just check that. If we have sin x by x then f of minus x will be uh, minus sin x by minus x the minus cancels out so sin x by x is just f of x so since f of minus x is f of x this is even function so you can use the property of even functions yeah. but if we do not use that it will be really uh, a trouble to solve let me show you why it's a trouble to solve without using the property of even function 
So for this integral, we can basically use Feynman's technique, which I have introduced in one of my other videos in this series. Do check that. I will put a link over here. Okay. Now, now for solving my Feynman's technique, we first introduce uh, another variable. Let's say t in this integral. Yeah, and uh, we will introduce this variable by using it to the power minus t x t x. Yeah. Now, with uh, this same limit, yeah, from minus infinity to infinity, we will not be able to solve by using Feynman's technique. Let me show you how we will not be able to solve. First of all, we will try to just differentiate uh, this function with respect to t. And we get integral from minus infinity to infinity. This will all just be constant because we are differentiating with respect to t. Yeah, the whole differentiation, when it goes inside the integral, that will be partial differentiation with respect to t, so x will be constant. I have explained these ideas in the video of human technique as well. And when you differentiate this, we e to the power minus dx dot minus x will be there. dx, x will cancel out. We will have minus integral from minus infinity to infinity. And then sine x, e to the power minus dx dx. Now this is uh, a standard integral. Yeah, e to the power ax sine bx kind yeah and we have we have a direct formula for solving this integral as well direct formula is if we have such an integral integral from 0 to infinity of e to the power ax sine bx dx in this case our integral will be e to the power ax by a square plus b square yeah a sine bx minus b cos bx this will be the answer yeah, and then put the limits so we'll do the same thing uh, this will be e to the power minus tx by uh, t square plus one yeah and then we will have this will be minus t sine x and then minus one cos x yeah and from minus infinity to infinity so at infinity, we will also have e to the power minus infinity term over here because in place of x, if we put infinity, this will be e to the power minus infinity and that will be 1 by e to the power infinity. And over here, the sine infinity, cos infinity are just some numbers that we don't know which are less than 1 because they are sine x, cos x, yeah, their values can't exceed 1. And in infinity, there's, in denominator, there's a big infinity due to this term. So that's why. Uh, e to the power minus infinity will uh, like make its value at zero yeah and then uh, this minus will mean minus will make a plus over here now if you substitute minus infinity that will be e to the power minus of minus infinity e to the power infinity yeah and these terms are again sine infinity cos infinity will just be some values less than one yeah we don't know that but because here's so e to the power infinity thing we will have infinity over here and that gives us the real trouble now we are not able to find a definite value because there's a infinity but if we didn't have this limit over here we would have been able to solve yeah and let me show you like how using the property of even function will help us get rid of this problem let me show you how and for that let me first uh, delete this Let me show you how. So we, I already showed you that this is even function. So this can be done as two times integral from zero to infinity of sine x by x dx. Yeah. Now let me write, let me use this integral. Now let me solve for this integral and just multiply the answer by two to get the answer of our original integral. Yeah. Now let f of t be integral from zero to infinity of sine x by x times e to the power uh, minus x t dx now if i differentiate with respect to t when it goes inside the integral that will be a partial differentiation with respect to t so the x terms will just be constant and we will have e to the power minus x t and then minus x dx now x will cancel out and so we will have Oh, this is not partial outside the integral we will have a whole differentiation inside the integral only we will have partial so df by dt 
will have integral from minus of integral from 0 to infinity e to the power minus x t sin x dx now this can be solved sin x dx now this can be solved using the standard formula that I mentioned earlier e to the power minus t x by t square plus 1 minus t sin minus t sin x yeah, what did I wrote over here yeah I wrote it right minus t sin x and then minus 1 cos x minus 1 cos x from 0 to infinity now if you like try to like uh, look at how the answer will be as usual at infinity e to the power minus infinity will dominate and we will get 0 minus at 0 now this will be e to the power 0 will be 1 and over here sin x will be just 0 and cos x will be 1 yeah now this will be 0 minus 1 minus 1 by t square plus 1 you see now this is defined not this is not like earlier earlier it was undefined i mean it was infinity sort of thing but now this is not infinity and now minus minus cancels out and again there's a minus so minus one by t square plus one now we'll be able to solve this integral using famous technique df equals to minus one by t square plus one dt so our f will be minus 10 inverse t plus c yeah uh, this is f of t okay now uh, now we need to solve this integral like we need to put uh, t as a zero yeah if t is zero our uh, f of zero will be the original integral yeah because it is what zero is one so f of zero will be the required answer for the integral but even if we put f of zero over here we will have f of zero equals to c now we need to find the constant c to solve this integral and for that if we put t equals to infinity e to the power minus infinity will be zero yeah so we will have integral from zero to infinity of zero dx and zero dx will just keep constant and from zero to infinity yeah and that will be c minus c let me show you how now over here f of infinity will just be integral from zero to infinity yeah so e to the power minus infinity will make it zero dx now that will just be c from zero to infinity that will just be c minus c that is zero that's why f of infinity is zero we know that and if you use that f of infinity tan inverse infinity is my pi by 2 plus c and f of infinity is zero so we can know that our constant is actually pi by 2 now we know that f of t is minus tan inverse t minus tan inverse t plus pi by 2 and our answer is f of 0 so f of 0 is minus tan inverse 0 is 0 plus pi by 2 so f of 0 is just pi by 2 yeah so so f of 0 is pi by 2 so that's why so f of 0 will be so f of 0 is pi by 2 and also f of 0 is integral from 0 to infinity of sin x by x and then e to the power 0 is 1 dx so this is what we wanted and we have got this using famous technique now for the original integral for the original integral now we can just know that this is twice of the integral this one and that is pi by 2 so the answer is pi so now see that how this integral which could not be solved without using the property of e1 function was solved when we use the property of e1 function so that's how e1 function can be helpful or functions are helpful and i also gave you uh, algebraic proof and algebraic proof a geometric proof yeah hope you enjoyed the video thanks for watching and look forward to seeing you in the upcoming videos in this series